It's a day we won't soon forget. March 30th, afternoon rush hour. A massive fire leads to the collapse of a portion of I-85, making an already difficult commute even worse, including the area of Cheshire Bridge and Piedmont. As thousands of drivers made new travel plans, Do you need anything no. to drink? That all comes to 41.99. Businesses like this Johnny's Pizza on Cheshire Bridge Road made adjustments as well. It would be weeks of financial loss for some as customers avoided the traffic congestion. The traffic was, was unbearable. Greg Nichols says he has seen about a 20% loss in business since the collapse. The collapse meant a slowdown in customers for Nakato Japanese restaurant, which attempted to take it all in stride as they waited for bridge repairs. I'm just majorly worried about the guests who, are, who found a comfort zone somewhere else. Uh, in that six weeks time and are they going to come back and support when they're already situated and comfortable. Across the street at Rhodes Bakery, owner Tom Rhodes is decorating one of his signature cakes. He says cake orders for weddings and graduations are typically up this time of year, but they too have experienced a slight drop in business. It's really difficult to get people to get out of this traffic and stop. Now that the bridge has reopened, and traffic in the area is flowing again. Atlanta City Council member Alex Wan hopes customers will return to his district's restaurants and shops to help businesses improve their bottom line. We look forward to the, the corridor being a thriving cor corridor again and uh, um, glad to be a part of this event. To celebrate the bridge's reopening and bring business back to the corridor, Juan joined forces with several neighborhood organizations for an event called Dine and Shop. It's been tough. It's been really tough. And uh, hopefully now that the bridge has been reopened, it's really beautiful for us to be able to see cars driving back and forth on the street now. Um, and we just need to remind folks that the businesses are here and to, to come support them. And that support is crucial. Dine and Shop is an invitation for customers to revisit their favorite restaurants, boutiques, and other shops. Some businesses joined in the celebration, offering 85 cent specials on food and drinks. But they don't want the celebration to end. Dine and Shop wants to achieve a restoration of sorts. It's about a commitment that goes well beyond the week. It's going to take a while for, for the businesses to recover, uh, and this is just the beginning. In Atlanta, Phyllis Jackson for City Channel 26. Atlanta City Council member Natalie Archibong hosted the Senior Block Party at the Veranda Auburn Point Apartments recently. Seniors were treated to a fun day of food, a talent show, and information from several vendors addressing everything from health to the aging process. Archibong says this event celebrates seniors and reminds them that they are appreciated and a valued part of the community. It's all about the jazz. Atlanta City Council member Andre Dickens and Council President Cesar Mitchell hosted the Neighborhood Jazz Series at West Manor Park. Some attendees brought their lawn chairs and blankets to enjoy the great weather and the music. The artists that are performing today is Grits and Jelly Butter Band, as well as Julie Dexter. Two big time bands, very professional, very good at what they do. As you can hear, these guys can mix jazz in with a little R&B, a little hip hop. People are dancing, having a good time. Council President Mitchell and I chose this park because we both went to high school and middle school between this park. And we both rolled down this hill as young people and we had fun in this area. And we need to be able to have balanced growth in this city where you have events on the north side, the west side, the south side, and the east side. And we're just doing our part to make sure that we spread the love across all of Atlanta. Jazz is the one true American-made uh, music art form and uh, in in Atlanta and in Georgia, it thrives. Uh, and so for 40 years, the city of Atlanta has had the Atlanta Jazz Festival. Uh, and so this year being an anniversary year is a very, very special uh, year for us and a very special year uh, for the city and for this community. A special year indeed. So special, in fact, that an Atlanta Jazz Festival coffee table book was created to commemorate those 40 years of jazz. It's filled with beautiful pictures taken by some talented Atlanta-based photographers who stopped by Atlanta City Hall's atrium to say hello and sign some autographs. Jim Alexander, Ernest Gregory, Michael Reese, Susan Ross, and Julie Yarbrough are responsible for the labor of love. 
Being a, a jazz photographer and a lover of jazz music, I don't think that any photographer could do this type of photography because to be successful at it, I think that you have to love the music and understand the music. And so it, it extends past that it is just a documentation of what's happening and becomes art. The book features images of Dizzy Gillespie, Sarah Vaughn, and Stanley Clark, to name a few. <laughs> supporting the vendors to continue this for so long and um, I'm proud to be a part of it. I'm proud to be here now, you know, it's just it's awesome. Oh, today is such an adventurous day. We come out here to have fun and just enjoy some jazz music. The first time I came to Atlanta Jazz Fest was 1989, almost 30 years ago. One thing I do remember is meeting Sarah Vaughn in the lobby of my hotel. Almost fainted. A sunny sky, a huge crowd, and a determination to win in the battle against kidney disease. Thank you so much for coming out today. Enjoy the walk, okay? Atlantic Station was the site of this year's Kidney Walk, led by the 2017 honorary co-chair, Atlanta City Council member Michael Bond. We want to raise awareness, we want to raise funds so that we can let people know about the potentiality of danger and also learn how they can avoid having kidney disease in the future. What the Kidney Foundation does is they do funding for so many projects and so many things that are important to our community. Team Atlanta understands what's at stake. According to the National Kidney Foundation, one in three American adults is at risk for the disease. Risk factors include diabetes, high blood pressure, being 60 or older, and a family history of kidney failure. We're celebrating the legacy of my mother, Cora Holder, who went to heaven on January 22nd, 2017. I have family members that, that are suffering from kidney disease. And so I just want to come out and, and support. And support is what this event is all about. Polly Tedoff has made this a family affair. All took part in the walk to support her father. And my dad just started dialysis a couple of weeks ago. Um, he was diagnosed with chronic kidney disease um, about a year ago, and it, it, it declined quite rapidly. And being a father and a stay-at-home dad for his seven-year-old twins, it's really taken a toll not only on his lifestyle, but on the lifestyle um, of the entire family. Two, one, Kidney disease often has no symptoms. A simple test can tell you if you have the disease. And although there is no cure, early detection and treatment could actually slow down or prevent the disease from progressing. This walk aims to spread the word and help people understand their risk factors. If you're a person like me, I'm a type 2 diabetic, and that is one of the potential complications from diabetes is the development of kidney disease. For more information, go to the website, www.kidneywalk.org. In Atlanta, Phyllis Jackson for City Channel 26.